Hey everybody, um, I wanted to um, go through a little bit about bootstrapping and just get you started on how we'll bootstrap using R. Um, so one of the first things that I'm going to point out is that in order to bootstrap with R, you need a library called boot. Um, I haven't had to use the libraries yet, although if you did some fancier graphing, you might have used them. Um, so in order to do this, you do need a library called boot. Okay. Um, so that otherwise this is my normal setup, um, my normal document. Uh, I've already gone ahead and included a link to my previous document, although I haven't linked the new document because I haven't done it yet. In any case, uh, I got a header here, bootstrapping. Cool. So then I get down here and I have my R environment. And um, I've done this thing, set.seed. Um, you'll notice I use this number, 42, um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, anybody? Um, setting the seed is just so that you can get reproducible um, results, so that your results will always be the same, even though we're doing something random. Uh, if you don't set the seed, every time you execute a bootstrap, you'll get a little different answer. Okay. So, um, so that's why I've done that. The next thing that I've done is I've defined a function. Um, so we've set this thing called sample mean to be the function that takes x and i and returns a mean of x with the indices i. Now, why we have to do this um, is because the bootstrap is going to pass a, um, a new selection of your data. The um, our bootstrap function is going to select a new um, selection of your data and you need to give it this way to select the data essentially um, okay so I have set that up um, next thing that I've done down here is I've just um, I've reassigned uh, let's call it GP I've reassigned GP to have gotten rid of the NAs that were in my data there were some games that hadn't been played yet um, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually call the bootstrap. Um, so I'm going to call the bootstrap uh, with my data, games played, and my statistics, which here is sample mean. And then the last thing I'm going to ask is that the bootstrap do something, and I'm going to ask it to do 100 different bootstrap samples. Uh, and then I'm going to ask it to plot those results. Um, so that's what this... A little box of code does and and there it gives my results um, this is a histogram of the um, the mean where it thinks the mean is uh, so we had already done a t-test on this and it was about 3.2 or something and here are the different um, different results the different plots uh, of course there is also a um, confidence interval uh, I think the confidence intervals are very, very important. 100 bootstrap replicants, remember that was this 100. Um, and I have a, a confidence interval uh, between 3.1 and 3.44. Um, and so, so what this suggests is that my actual mean, if this is a sample, um, my, my, um, population mean should be somewhere between 3.1 and 3.44. So if you gave me as a null hypothesis that the mean was at 4, um, I would reject this. Um, we had already done this test with um, t-test. Uh, maybe I should do that really fast. Um, we had already done this test by using t.test of um, what I call it. I call it GPs, right? Um, and u equals, it's set it to be 4 or something. Um, and when I run that, um, we see that we get this confidence interval. Now one of the things you should see is that these confidence intervals are going to be very similar, although they won't be exactly the same. Um, but they, they should be pretty, pretty similar. Um, really, the confidence interval is the thing we're after um, when we do the bootstrap. Um, so that that's what we're normally going after. Um, the center of the bootstrap should be the actual mean, um, but it will it does have some variance. It does have some randomness to it, um, so it can move around a little bit. All right. So using that library boot, uh, you must redefine your function. You should set your seed so you can have reproducibility. 
get rid of your NAs, and then I run the boot on my data with that function, and I ask it to do 100 times, and I plot the results. Oh, by the way, guys, let's just show you that if I changed the um, seed a little bit, uh, my histograms are going to look really, really similar. Actually, that one doesn't look all that similar, uh, but we'll see here, too, that my percentiles change. Uh, 3.5 to 3, uh, 3.05 to 3.5. Uh, that actually looks a little closer to this 95% confidence interval. This one will never change. Um, it, there is no randomness in the t-test, so um, be aware of that. Okay, so um, I think that's that's what you're going to do with your t-test. Of course, you should be stating your hypothesis and what you're doing and why you picked some values. Right? Why did I pick four here? I don't know. <laughs> um, but that was my null hypothesis, so um, you should be playing around with that and make sure you state all that stuff. All right, guys.